Hello. In today's video, we're going to be looking at how to paint rock. I'm going to be showing you 10 different techniques for painting rocks. You don't have to use all of them, but it's good to have an idea of the options you have available to you when you put rocks in your paintings. Hi, my name is Joe Cartwright. Welcome to my studio. My aim with these videos is to help you paint better watercolours. And remember, if you like what you see, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be informed of each new video I produce. Before we start painting, I want to talk to you a little bit about the structure of rocks and some of the things you have to keep in mind. So here is a, a rock and it's sitting on the ground. Now, if you just paint it like that, it, it won't look like a rock. Um, it's very flat and there's no form to it, meaning um, a, th a three-dimensional form. So to achieve that, the first thing we have to think about is where is the light coming from? So in this case, let's say the light is coming from this top left-hand corner and it's hitting this, this rock um, on this side and where the, the light hits the rock, that will be... Um, the lightest part, so where the light hits the rock at 90 degrees, that's where the rock is going to be the, the lightest. And as you move away from that, there's going to be less and less light. So if we say there's the initial tone of the rock if it had no shadows on it, but because of the form, some parts of the rock are going to be shaded. So this part's your lightest part and then we're going to have a mid-tone or the, the next tone. So this is your lightest tone, this is your mid-tone and then as the rock curves under, so if we draw it here like this, the light's coming like that, this part will have the most light on it and then this part here will start going into some sort of shading and then as we get closer to the ground it's going to get darker still. So here this is our lightest tone then, our, um, then this area will be mainly in mid-tone and then as it, the rock curves under like this we get a darker tone still. And that will start giving our rock some uh, um, feeling of depth. Let me just strengthen this a little bit with some more marks. There you go. So these are the three tones we should be thinking about. Um, you can add more, or, but, but generally three tones will start giving your object some, uh, some nice form. The other things we have to think about is a shadow. So if, this, if the light is coming from here in this area, this rock is going to cast a shadow. So this area here will be in shadow and this area down here will be in shadow. So if we look at this rock from above, the light's hitting here, so this is the lightest part and then it gets darker at the edges around this area. And then because the light's coming from this direction, it's hard to sort of show you um, in, in this direction, this rock will cast a shadow on the ground, so this area here will be in shadow. Um, and, and, uh, and in fact this side here will be a little bit in shadow as well. And you have to take that into account when you're painting. The darkest shadow will be in this region, directly below the rock, but as the shadow is often cast beyond the rock, that shadow will be lighter. And the reason for that is, in addition to the light coming from the sun, so we'll just say this is the light from the sun, you also get light here. So this is this light is from the sky. So you think of it as a blue sky, sometimes it's a grey sky. Um, but whatever, in addition to the light from the sun, there'll be some light coming from the sky. So this part of the rock acts like a big umbrella 
and stopping any light from the sky or the sun um, hitting this area. But then once um, the shadow extends beyond the edge of the rock, some of this sky colour is going to affect that. And that's, the, and that's what causes some shadows to have a, a slight uh, bluish tint to them. It's a grey sky, then you have more of a, a grey uh, light. So we have light coming from the sun, we have light coming from the sky. There's one other light source that we have to think about. And maybe I'll use a different sheet for that. So there's our rock sitting on the ground. We've got sun, light, we've got sky, light, and then the third form of, of uh, light will be, say there's another rock here, and some of this sunlight's coming through and hitting that, and then it reflects off. And this is reflected light. This is probably the, the, um, uh, the one type of light that's often forgotten and, and not always easy to see. Okay, on the screen I'm just going to put a, a photo which will show you this reflected light. I have some cabins in the front of some very, very white sand and you'll see the, the colours reflected in that. Let's get into our painting now. first rock we're going to look at is just a, a smooth rock, looks a little bit like an egg sitting on the ground and, um, and we're going to have light coming from this side. And for this exercise I'm going to mix three small puddles of paint, a light tone, I'll just use some burnt sienna for that with maybe just a touch of French ultramarine and then mid-tone, maybe a little bit more of that, burnt sienna and a bit more French ultramarine and when we're talking about tones we're talking about the relative lightness and darkness of a colour and effectively in watercolour when you increase tone you in you're increasing the paint consistency. For the same amount of water you're going to have more paint in that mixture. And then a small amount of very dark paint. Again just the same two colours. This is just an exercise in, in um, how to paint rocks. We're not going to worry too much about the colours. There we go. One, two, three. So I'll start with a lighter tone first. And I'm painting on Arches um, 185 GSM um, medium paper, also known as cold press. Here we go. And if you leave a few little uh, bits of untouched paper, that's, that's fine too. That, adds a bit more texture. So that's our light tone and I paint the whole shape with that. And remember this is going to be our lightest area here so then I'll just go in and paint over the rest of the rock from the light area. So I'll leave a little gap of light area and then I'll paint into that while it's still wet so we get a soft transition and I'll paint this area with the medium strength mix and then again while that's still drying this part um, of the rock we'll paint that with our next tone and that's, that gives our rock some shape. Then on the ground we can just put a line across here for the shadow. Now underneath the rock 
this part of the rock, uh, quite often you get a very dark area where no light gets into. So what you can do is you can pick up some of this darker mixture and add some more French ultramarine and burnt sienna to it. Again, no more water. Obviously, if you run out of this thicker mixture, then you have to start with some more water. And this is an even thicker mix, and just underneath this area here, we'll throw in some extra, an extra dark shape, and that helps connect it to this shadow shape. So that's our first rock. That's number one. So the second rock will have some angular planes and so this will have some sharp edges. So let's say we have a rock that's maybe looks something like this. Nothing too fancy. Um, square that up a bit. All right. Now, if we again we have the light coming from here, so this is this is sunlight, and then. Um, now, because that light's coming there, we're going to get um, a little bit of a shadow coming out this way. And the same here. And we have to take that into account. So again, let's start by mixing just a very weak light tone like that. Just a little bit of the burnt sienna. I had some French ultramarine on there too just to dull it off. Uh, again it doesn't, it's not that critical. And then the mid-tone, French ultramarine and, and burnt sienna. There. And then our dark tone is more French ultramarine and burnt sienna and less water. And that'll do for now. So let's pick up some of the light tone. And I'm just painting this very with very quick dry brush strokes. I'm happy to have some rough edges. There we go. And I'm just using a size 10 brush for this. And the size of the paper is what we call a 16th sheet, which is uh, approximately 18 centimeters by 12 and a half centimeters. Or in the imperial scale, seven inches by five inches. Okay. So now we're going to the areas that hit uh, are getting lots of sunlight will be our lightest tone, and then these walls will be in sh shadow there, there, and there. There we go and then these walls will cast a shadow. And the cast shadow will be darker than this light tone. And depending on, on how much light from the sky, like the, if it's a blue sky, um, that will lighten it a bit. So really you have to, it depends on the environment as to how light or dark the, uh, the shadow will be. The main thing in, um, in this case, I want to make sure that the shadow is darker than this sunlit shape. So 
so this shadow comes out this way something like that again this shape will all depend on the angle of the light uh, uh, there we go and where the rocks join again there's another time where you'll generally have a quite a dark shadow so I'll pick up some of my darker mixture pick up some more paint which I need a little bit more moisture in my brush it's a bit too dry and just paint that in there we go and the top th these top areas if there's any texture on the rock all you do is get a brush that has just a very small amount of moisture in it let me just remove that I'll just remove this extra paint that I accidentally dragged onto the top. There we go. So I get a brush, very little paint on it, and then just run that across, and that will just add some texture to it. The same down the side. These, these can act as little crevices. re-establish this dark there we go so that's a, 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 in this case we're getting sharper edges a little bit broken so you don't want you know unless it's a, a crystal or something you know or, or a man-made brick wall where you get you can have quite sharp edges in uh, natural rock you want a few broken edges just to give it a little bit more character. And this is number two. This third rock example is going to be how to create um, texture using a credit card um, on your rock. So I'm just going to create a couple of shapes, rock-like shapes. There we go. And I'll go back to mixing my three tones. Put some water in my palette now. Okay, so the first one, again, just some burnt sienna. Just a little bit of French ultramarine. That'll do. And for this exercise, I'm going to use slightly thicker paint. So again, thicker paint just means more paint, less water. Go, and this is our thickest paint. While we've been mixing our lightest tone, there's nothing stopping you from um, just using the white of the paper as your lightest tone. So in this case, I might just wet the top of the rock like that. Then I'll go into the light tone. Okay. Then I'll drop in some mid-tones. and then some darker tones. 
this is quite wet, so I might lift some of this excess moisture. Thicken up my darker tones. There we go, in fact, I'll put some up here. There we go. Maybe bring this rock down a bit. Just give it a bit of a shadow here. All right, so we've painted our rock. Again, let's mark the light. And, and I'm letting some of that moisture soak into the paper because in a minute I'm going to get my credit card and use it to help create some extra texture. And while I'm waiting for that to dry a little bit, so this is sample number three. So right now, you see that the board still got quite a lot of shine on it. If you go in too soon, you end up with primarily dark marks because the credit card will scrape the surface layer of sizing that's on the paper and then the paint will be very quickly absorbed into that. Once that sizing is gone, the paint can be absorbed by the paper very quickly and generally you'll end up with dark marks. So you have to wait until some of that shine's gone if I go in now, I should get some areas that are light and other areas that are dark. So let's see how we go. So just an old credit card. I usually cut them up into little shapes like this. And let's scrape in some highlights. There, maybe here. And maybe even another one. There we go. And we're just creating little shapes. There you go. And then you can pick up a small brush. This is my size six brush some of this thick paint and here and there you can drop in some of this thicker paint which helps create some interesting textures and shapes that read like rocks. Here these, these will bring them down a bit, turn that into a, another little rock that sits down here. There we go. And then I'll just soften some of these edges at the top. So I'm just trying to give you ideas as to how you can you can paint rocks. But again, the main thing is you're looking for a light tone, a sort of mid-tone, and then a darker tone. That's example number three, where we use um, slightly thicker paint and we use a credit card to create the texture on the rock and, and this allows us to give us a, a, a lot more variation in our um, rock surface. All right, uh, in this, this rock, we're gonna use some candle wax that will act as a resist um, on the surface of the rock and preserve some of our highlights. So let's just draw some other rock. Bring this one down a bit, leave that up there. Maybe a third rock here. With our light, coming from here. We would expect 
some highlights here. This is something you have to experiment with. The, you know, the harder the, you press, the more solid a line you create. Um, if you press lightly, you can create some nice broken edges. Let's assume there's some shape here that's picking up a little bit of light, so we'll, we'll put that there, maybe at the top, somewhere here, maybe some there, and a few little dabs here and there. But again, it's something you have to practice, uh, uh, just test on, on different colour paper, try using different parts of the candle, you know, for sharp edges, for blunt shapes to cover bigger areas. Um, the important thing is practice before you use it on your finished painting. And we still have the same colours here, so we'll just work with them. So I'm going in with my lighter tone. Um, the French ultramarine and burnt sienna with lots of water in it. Then I'll go in with my mid-tones. Might make it a bit stronger. It's a bit too, too light for what I want. And here and there, so maybe under, wherever there's a, a little highlight, I can go in with some of this mid-tone. And you can see how the, wherever I put candle wax, the watercolour isn't sticking to that. And then I can go in with my darkest tone, make it a little bit stronger. Here and there, there'd be crevices too, you can put some paint for them. So now we've got the lightest tone, which is where the candle wax is, and then some mid-tone, and then some darker areas. Um, and it all helps to give the rock some form. Then I might pick up some of this mid-tone Maybe lighten it a little bit. And we're going to just place a little shadow there. There you go. And that's not a bad little grouping of rocks. That one's number four. There's nothing to stop you combining all these techniques. For instance, if I wanted to, I could get my uh, credit card and, and use that to add some more texture, um, or any of the other techniques I'm going to show you. We still have a few to go. In this next example, I use a technique where I put quite thick paint um, in areas of the rock, and then uh, uh, when it gets a little bit damp, I actually drizzle water uh, from the top of the rock and let the water help create some wonderful textures on the rock. It's a little bit hit and miss, but with practice you get more hits than miss. Let's have a go. Here's a rock. You always have to know where the light's coming from, otherwise you, your rock doesn't look real. And if you have light in the wrong place, it, um, we just instinctively know something's not right there. I'm going to put another rock here. That'll do. Okay. So we'll get some of this um, lighter tone. Take some moisture out of my brush. I don't want the brush too wet for this. I want to be able to also leave some untouched areas. There we go. Just, and then I'll go in with some of this mid-tone. I'll 
I'll just drop it in. So when you're dropping in paint, you've got a wet surface, which you've wet with the first layer, and you just lightly run the tip of the brush around, and the, the paint just drops into the surface of your paper. Same, and that way what happens is you touch the wet area and the paint flows to these areas that are still dry and leave those little shapes there. Okay, then I'll go on this even thicker paint. Again, we're just using French ultramarine and burnt sienna for these, this exercise. There we go. And then I'll, I'll wait till this loses some of its shine. See how it's still quite shiny? I need to lose some of that. And um, in fact, while it's sitting there, uh, I'm just drying some of that surface moisture. I'm gonna get my, this is a size eight brush. I've squeezed all the moisture out I'm going to drag some of that paint across these shapes to add a little bit more texture. That'll do. Break some of these shapes up. And one other thing I'll do, I'll get some thicker paint still. So I'll start with this thickness paint, find a dry area of my palette and add some more paint but no more moisture. And when you're picking up paint from your palette, make sure you are picking up drier paint. Sometimes in the paint well, uh, water will pool and you think this, you're picking up paint but really you're picking up more water than paint. And just here and there I'm going to drop some of this even thicker paint. There we go. All right. So now I'll clean my brush. This is a size 12 brush, which is quite a big brush. Um, I'm going to just tap it a couple of times, which will take out about 10% of the water, but you want a lot of water on this. And then I'll just run some of this water. Again, I'm just dropping lots of water from the top here and letting it run, okay? And you can see how it's creating some lovely shapes. And this is what I mean by it's a little bit hit and miss, but uh, frankly, it's more hit than miss. The main thing is don't keep playing with it. Once you've got a shape that you like, then leave it. And, um, and it leaves you with some very nice transitions between warm and cool colours and light tones and dark tones. You could go in and add one or two other marks if you wanted to, but um, be very careful because if you keep playing with it, you'll lose some of these uh, lovely shapes. You know, maybe here just to change that, the direction of that paint flow a little bit. And underneath some of these little highlights, I can put some extra dark. And that sort of reads as a, a crevice in the rock or something like that. Anyway, that's it. That's another technique. It'll be number five. This next rock is going to be... Um, uh, just showing you how to handle painting a rock or a rock wall when you have grass, tall grass coming up against it. So let's say we've got a rock um, something like this but then here 
we have lots of grass. So the way I handle that, again, let's put the light, let's say the light's coming from this side this time. If you're going to paint light grass against a dark rock, you can't bring the, the dark rock all the way down to the ground, otherwise um, you won't see the grass. So you have to leave untouched areas at the edge of the rock. And you'll see how I do that. Just start with some light tones here. There. And then we'll go in just a little bit of this mid-tone. Now what I like to, what I like to use for this is a fan brush. So this is a um, hog hair um, fan brush and I'll pick up some of this darker paint and I paint the grasses with this. What I'm actually painting is the gaps of the shadow areas um, in between the grasses. Need a little bit more moisture. And the main thing is not to make this look like a lawn, so you vary the, the spacings and the height of some of this, these grasses, something like that. And then we'll go back in and then finish painting the, uh, the dark area of the rock. There we go. Okay. lift some highlights. So here I'm just lifting just a little bit of this paint, cleaning the brush, squeezing all the moisture out. Might change this shape a little bit. There we go. Put a bit of texture on that rock. We'll bring this rock here down a bit. There we go. And just to finish it off, we'll just throw some grasses out to the side here. Maybe a few over here just as a little. So this is how you create that edge. If you then wanted to go in with a, a grass colour, say some 
raw sienna. So we'll pick some of that up. You can then go in underneath that and you know wait till most of that is dry and then you can go in and paint some of the, that other grass. And it doesn't matter if some of the paint is damp and you get some variation. The grasses aren't going to be the, uh, uniform. That look very boring anyway. So we just vary those colours a little bit. And that's it. Then you can even give them a little shadow. This is number six. Our next rock is um, a rock that's partially in water and um, where it has a shadow and a reflection. So we're just going to paint a simple rock, um, something like that. There. This is one of those times where you know, there's only just a small amount of moisture around the rock. If it's, the water's too deep, you won't see a shadow, it's, or, 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 or it'll be very hard to, to spot. Um, but what you always will see is the reflection. So this is, in this case, we'll do the rock and then I'll show you what happens with the reflection. So we'll just start with some, a light tone. Leave a little highlight there. Same here, a little highlight at the top maybe. And then we'll go in with our mid-tone. With, with bigger paintings, I, I mix lots of paint before I even touch the paper, but for small paintings like this, it really doesn't matter. Again, if I want just a small amount of moisture, rather than dipping my brush in a big tub of water, I'll look at my palette and see if there's some a small amount of water there. Um, and if the colours are harmonious, meaning they're, they're similar, then um, I there's no problem by picking that moisture up and it allows me to sort of micro adjust the, the, the uh, paint consistency. So I'll just throw some of that in. This is drying fairly quickly so we're, we're losing, um, we're not getting the paint flowing up to the top very much. I'll adjust that in a minute. Then I'll pick up some thicker paint don't need a lot of it so really it was just the moisture that was left in my brush after picking this paint up and adding some more paint to it and that automatically darkens it. So it's let's, let's throw some of this darker paint up here and um, and if I don't I'm not happy with that sharp edge there all I need to do is uh, get a brush clean it, take out about half of the moisture and then just run that along that edge and that will just soften that edge. You have to do it before that edge totally dries however. Now the lights coming from here, if there's only a small amount of water around Think of these rocks uh, um, on a sandy beach, quite flat, and there's just a, a thin veneer of water on the sand, then you would get a little shadow away from the direction of light. A lot of people get shadows and reflections totally confused. The, basis, the basic concept is shadows are always away from the light, so if the light's coming from this side, the shadow will be away from it. Reflections are always downwards towards the viewer. So in this case, the reflections are going to be down this way. So you can, and there's multiple ways to do that. You can either um, wet this area, and let's do that for this one. So you just wet it, and that starts that reflection happening. And sometimes that's all you need to do. You know, you, you just have, you don't always need a, a, um, 
a big reflection, especially if the sand sort of dries quite close to the rocks. But if, if you want a bigger reflection, you can then go in into that wet paper and just drop that in. So the reflections are down this way. If you've got some dark areas, they will have a darker reflection and the lighter areas will have a lighter reflection. If there's water flowing and, and you know, you've got little waves there, then you, instead of having smooth reflections like this, you'll have more of a, a ripple uh, effect in the reflection. I'm going to get some more of this, uh, some of this thicker paint and at the water's edge, I'm going to just run that around. And I'm doing it while the, the rock itself is still a little bit damp and, and you have some of the paint flowing up as well as flowing down and that helps connect the rock uh, to the water. This next uh, technique involves using the side of my brush to create a, a dry brush effect. So we'll just start with a couple of rocks. There we go. And again, the light's coming from this way. Just mix up a light tone and make this very light. And we can cover the whole rock with this. I'm not going to use a lot of paint. want this to dry fairly quickly. Now you can get a hair dryer and speed the drying time so um, that's another option. There we go. Maybe lighten that a bit more. Right, I'll just go and dry that with a hairdryer. I'll just mix a, a little puddle of this darker tone. And then an even smaller puddle of this very dark tone. That'll do. So let's have a look at this rock here. It'll have some darker passages. And then I'll pick up a, probably this mid-tone, lighten it a bit. Take out about half the moisture in the brush and even tap it lightly on a towel so that you don't have a lot of paint in your brush when you do this.
There we go. This surface is in shade, so you won't see much texture there. But on the edge, you can quick dry brush there, just to give you a little bit of a broken edge. Here and there you can put in a crevice with just the tip of the brush. Again, you don't you don't want to overdo it once it sort of starts looking you know like a believable rock, that's probably the time when you should be thinking of leaving it. And then this will have a little shadow underneath here. And we'll get some of the really dark paint just on the edge there. And this other rock, similar technique. Again, not a lot of paint in your brush. And you know there's not a lot of paint because it's not bouncing back to a point. Just run it across like that. And maybe here. There. And this area will be in shadow. So you can see the important thing is getting the shadow shapes um, and, the, and the various tones. I'm going to make this a bit stronger in tone. There we go. And we'll break up this edge a bit. this flat plane would be getting some light from this from the sky it will be a little bit lighter and there we go and again you don't have to um, keep working on it as soon as it sort of looks like a rock that's when you say that's enough this side being away from the light will be darker than these shadows And we'll give it a little 
and shadow on the ground. I really encourage you to spend some time when you're outside looking at rocks, looking at the shapes, looking at the texture on the shapes and, and importantly also looking at where the light and dark areas are relative to the light. So this one's number eight. In this segment we're going to look at how to create a mass of rocks without trying to paint um, each one. So say uh, we're at the water's edge and you've got some big rocks there, there and then some smaller rocks. Firstly I try to give add some variety. I don't want them to all be uh, too regular, vary their size, vary their shape, something like that. Um, you can have some bigger rocks here. Make these a bit bigger. There. And again, I'll have the light coming from here. I'll mix quite a strong colour, more like a mid tone rather than a light tone. A bit stronger than that. Good. And we'll go in and paint these shapes very quickly. a bit more dry brush. Let's throw some up here. So dry brush strokes a quick brush stroke that leaves behind these broken edges. That's what we call a broken broken edge there. Here we go. And then um, let's hint it. We had some water here say. So. Just so that's something in the distance. There we go. Then we can get our credit card again and then we'll wait to the shine stone to leave some of these areas so it's probably okay to start now and we're going to use it to create shapes that could end up looking like rocks. By doing this we're using the texture of the paper and you know, we, we drag some of the paint down and we get some of these darker edges. Again we're just trying to create the impression of a mass of rocks. Some of these already look like rocks. This just adds a bit more texture to them. Let's put a few more here. That'll do. 
and we're going to add more paint to this and just thicken it. This is almost well, pretty close to house paint consistency. So we'll we'll keep these light areas, uh, but in the dark areas, we'll drop in some of this darker paint. So that'll be the crevices within the rocks. Again, you don't have to do it for all of them. So sometimes you'll you'll have the crevice against a light area, and other times it'll be against a, a darker area. Let's throw in and change these to some more rocks here. There we go. Then I might clean my brush and here and there I'll soften some of these edges so they're not all hard edges. And we'll use some of this colour, we'll just dilute it a bit and we're going to have a, these will all have a shadow. This shadow's a bit too strong. Let's dilute it. That's good enough. And then you can get, we can add a little bit of dry brush to some of these, add some more texture. Remember, we're just trying to create the impression of all these rocks. Sometimes these strokes are straight, sometimes they're curved. Leave little gaps in them and the, you immediately create a rock with a, with a gap between it and the next rock. you can just scrape a little highlight. And there you have it. That's a nice little mass of rocks and a fairly simple way to produce them. And this is number nine. Again, none, these aren't meant to be finished paintings or anything. They're just to give you an idea of different techniques you can try to create um, rocks. For our last rock, I'm going to be painting um, a rock that has multiple colours. This rock, most of it will be painted wet on wet. So let's something like that. Might have another layer here. Here, case. Okay, so we'll mix some. Maybe start with some raw sienna. And there'll be a shadow, because it's, you know, if it's light on top, it'll have a shadow side. So we'll just have some French ultramarine, a little bit of permanent rose, a tiny bit of burnt sienna, just to grey it off just a fraction.
maybe a little bit of red, so we'll use some Scarlet Lake. And then maybe some Burnt Sienna and French Ultramarine for just a darker passage. Here we go. There we go, that'll do. So let's start with just some raw sienna. While that's wet, we'll drop in the shadow side. And remember, the light is coming from here, the main light, which is from the sun. Run this down. some red. Sometimes on beaches you find all these multicoloured rocks. Different strata. If you, if you lift some dry areas you can just put a little drop of paint underneath and it highlights the the little lit areas. These, these might be in, imperfections in the rock and um, maybe a bit harder than the rest of the rock so they sit up a bit and um, and a bit more pronounced. Let's throw in some other shapes. Maybe not. There we go. And then this will have a shadow. And then again at the bottom, there'll be a much stronger shadow. And you know, if it, you can also, you, you can find lines and of different coloured rock in these rocks. You can add them later when this is when this is dry. This is just something out of my imagination, so I'm not going to do much more with it. Maybe. And that's it. Again, you've got a shadow side, a sunlit side, and then you've got a cast shadow um, that helps connect the rock to the uh, the rock to the ground. And that's it. And that's number ten.
If you like this video, please subscribe and, and hit the notification bell so you'll be advised of each new video I produce. See you for the next video.